Are you stuck at a plateau with your bench press? You're trying to burst through the weights and you can't get that bench to go up at all. You flatline for a year and you want to figure out what you can do to improve your bench. We're going to dive deep into the topic of bench press physiology and what you can do to improve that bench. What's up everybody, I'm Dane Miller from GarageStrength.com and I'm gonna provide a whole bunch of information around bench press physiology and how you can utilize this information to break your plateau. So when we're talking about the bench press, it's really, really important that we understand what this means as a whole, that the bench press is essentially the squat of the upper body. It is arguably the best upper body movement that you can do to increase your strength and increase your power output from your chest, from your arm extensors. And it's extremely important if it's done properly, it will keep your shoulders healthy and it'll keep your ability to apply force in various sports like wrestling, football, track and field, throwing, you know, discus, shot put, anything like this, even exercises like breaststroke and swimming, utilize the bench press and utilize the pectoral muscles quite a bit. So we've got to execute the movement as properly as possible. So from a physiological perspective, we've got to think right away, what are we going to do on liftoff? So if we're taking that bar out of the rack, we've got to establish the proper grip. We've got to be anywhere from 18 to 24 inches. It's going to vary depending upon arm length, but we've got to think when we get set, we want to set our back and we want to establish a co-contraction. We can establish a co-contraction. That means that our lat is going to contract around our shoulder joint and our pecs and our lats will co-contract together. And what ends up happening is we're gonna pinch those shoulder blades back and that established co-contraction is now going to protect the shoulder joint. And that's gonna make the shoulder joint a little bit more stable as we're getting into the into the lift. So during liftoff, we want, bef just prior to liftoff, we wanna establish the co-contraction in our lats. We want our shoulder blades to hug our spine and we wanna have an isometric leg drive with our legs, ideally our feet being flat. So that isometric leg drive is going to help create a bit more force in the co-contraction between the lats and the pecs, shoulders to stabilize that joint. And on top of that, when we lift it off, and we're trying to focus on that neural drive, now our nervous system is heightened and we're going to be able to recruit high threshold motor units more effectively. We're going to be able to utilize our proper muscles and make sure that the muscles that we need to work to put out as much force as possible are primed and ready to roll. So during the descent of the lift, the eccentric portion of the lift, we've gotta stay focused on maintaining that that leg drive, maintaining our shoulder blades, hugging the spine, maintaining that co-contraction in the shoulders with the pecs and the lats, and understanding that during that horizontal adduction that we're gonna have, we're gonna be focused on our pecs being active and our shoulder blade, the, that shoulder girdle under control. And we're even gonna have a small co-contraction in our bicep and our tricep to protect the elbow joint. As we go through that, that eccentric portion of the lift, during the, the horizontal adduction, our pecs will start to get stretched quite a bit as we get close to the bottom of the lift. And that's where we're gonna get into the coupling phase. So even if you can think back to our stretch shortening cycle video in our physiology of plyometrics, you can understand how to utilize a stretch shortening cycle effectively. And even in the bench press, there is a stretch shortening cycle just at the bottom of the lift. Our pecs can get rapidly stretched. It should be under control. It should be trained to a point if you want to get a little bit of a, of a stretch. But this is the point in the lift where many big benches fail. So if you've been stuck at a plateau, you likely have a terrible eccentric portion of the lift because you are not focused on your upper back. You are not focused on your rhomboids and your lats supporting that chest on the bench press. And you're not able to control the amortization phase or the coupling phase when you're getting into that stretch shortening cycle. So that's what we try to train inside our 12 week uh, advanced bench press plateau breaker program. So if you head over to GradStrike.com, you can pick up the plateau breaker program today. And this will teach you how to work through that eccentric portion effectively 
and then it'll teach your body to utilize the stretch shortening cycle as well as it possibly can. Because when we get to the chest, we want to think the biggest stretch that we will get in the pec and we want to coordinate that with our elbow drive and we've got to think about our elbows have to be under our forearm we don't want to see the elbows shifting one way or the other and that will keep that more stable drive as we go through the concentric portion of the lift we have that isometric leg drive established right off the lift off that's going to be controlled through the bottom portion of the face through the eccentric and once we get to the coupling period we're going to drive a little bit more with our glutes into the bench press we want our glutes to almost squeeze the bench and then that energy from the hips and the glutes is going to be transferred into the lats which is then going to be transferred into the hands as you're applying force properly and if we can think about on the concentric portion of the lift it's the intent has to be to move the bar as fast as possible. If we have the intent to move that bar as rapidly as possible, we're gonna utilize the stretch shortening cycle more effectively, and we will recruit more high threshold motor units, which will then mean more fast twitch muscle fibers will be trained and our bench will break through those plateaus. But we've gotta make sure that our elbows are staying under our hands, and that as we drive, we're continuing to hold our retracted shoulder blades and driving with the triceps, the shoulders, you know, our, our anterior delts and our pecs. But that stable shelf of the shoulder blades and the lats must be established early on. And if we can even think about when we're benching, we're gonna have almost like this reverse J curve at the top of the bench press. And that's because of what our elbows are doing. We shouldn't be flaring out. Our elbows should be staying almost at like a 45 degree angle. And as you stay at that 45 degree angle, the triceps and the biceps will protect that. And that's gonna make your drive more effective and it will prevent the elbows from getting out of position and you losing your groove. But it's gotta be established right off the bat. So lift off, focus on that co-contraction, establish that isometric leg drive on the descent. We're working through that horizontal adduction and we're gonna be recruiting the pec and in the, the triceps as we decelerate that bar, but at the bottom, right at the coupling phase, we wanna get a little bit of a stretch shortening cycle out of that so we have more explosiveness off the chest and through that concentric portion of the lift, we wanna have the intent to move the bar as fast as possible. And all these things are well-trained in our Plateau Breaker Bench Program. Head over to GrabShank.com, pick that up. Please like, subscribe, comment down below with what are your problems? What are you constantly dealing with in the bench press? Is it, is it that lockout position? Is it right off the chest? Comment down below. We'll get back to you on how you can improve that. And we'll, in the future, we'll even do a couple different videos on how you can improve off the chest, how you can improve that lockout position. Ring that notification bell. Peace.